Welcome to MedMen. My name is Andy White. My name is Pim Olofsson. And today we're talking about deal reviews, when you can get the whole team together to look at one of the team's deals and really kind of dig into it and, and basically make progress. But whilst at the same time, everybody's benefiting from learning a little bit more about the medic framework. What do you think about deal reviews, Pim? Well, I think they can be great. <laughs> um, and, you know, we've all been there, right? Deal review, QBR, what else have you? Uh, just the sellers, management in, or even SEs in the extended team. You have different settings there. But I, I feel that there are challenges for many organizations out there when it comes to the way that these uh, meetings are set up, the, the, what they focus on, um, and whether there's a common language in place so that when you uh, explain certain elements about the deal that the person that you're explaining it to is actually understanding it in the way that you meant to say it, right? Yeah. So yeah, so those are some of the considerations and things coming up w when we speak about this. Yeah, whenever I get asked about how to run a good medic deal review, I think people are always looking for me to look at the quite logistical things. They wanna right. know which letter should we start with? How, what, what, what medium should we capture the information? What in? do you say? Well, which, which letter should we start with? Well, I, I, I think, I think I will answer that question. Like, typically, I, I like to start with the pain because that kind of frames where, you know, where everything starts really, yeah. you know, where, where, where everyone's interests are going to be aligned. But I think that that's really the, the wrong way to be thinking about mm -hmm. it, right? I think if you think, when I think about the, and you talked about a bit there, when I talk, think about a deal review, it is probably one of the most powerful hours. I tend to recommend an hour you can spend with your team on not just enhancing their deal, but enhancing your implementation of medic post implementation. So post training, post enablement. It's the it's the, the thing that can really start to set the scene for culturally how medic is going to be embraced in your organization. Yeah. And so that doesn't come down to logistical things like which letter you start with. It comes down to the cultural understanding that first and foremost, Medic is a framework that's gonna make everybody in that room more successful. There's not one person, whether you're on a quota or not, that's not gonna become more successful from Medic because if nothing else, the efficiency is gonna go through the roof, right? Mm -hmm. um, of course, success is gonna go up, more deals faster, all that good stuff, which benefits everyone in an organization. There's not one person that doesn't benefit yeah. from Medic. But to get to that point where everyone's using it openly, honestly, with an air of like vulnerability, which is needed to be able to have very open and frank conversations, you have to start with everybody trusting each other. Yeah. And that trust is really, 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 I mean, I'm just gonna say really important. It's, it's imperative. If you don't have trust, yeah. you can't do a deal review because the, the salesperson will not feel like they're trusted by their peers or by their, their leadership team. Yeah, there are, there are a few big words there, Andy. I mean, yeah. uh, honesty, <laughs> trust, culture like these are big topics right but yeah. if we if we think about what that looks like what well, when you were talking i was just thinking like hey have i been in deal reviews where this these things weren't the case right mm -hmm. and uh, and and sometimes it's not even uh, uh due to a company culture or um uh, to honesty but it's really um not having the, the the right things in place yet to really let a, a deal review take place in the way that you are just describing right. and what that looks like is that for example an ae you know takes the stage uh presents the deal um and it might be along the lines of medic and what they start doing is they start telling everything they know about the deal <laughs> and if they if if there's something they don't know they make something up yep. and the goal with that is to look good towards the management yes and especially, you know, there's a lot of growing companies out there. There's promotions being made, SDRs that go to AE and so on. So you don't always have uh, a team together that is at that cultural level that you're talking about, right? And so I think that that is what it can still look like for a lot of organizations out there. And, and what I would want to talk about here a little bit is how we overcome that. How yeah. do companies get to the level where there is that level of trust and there is that kind of a culture? Well, the key to that for me is in what you said there about the individuals trying to look good. Right. If they're trying to look good at the cost of communicating the, the state of the deal, then that's already wrong, right? Because you should at that point 
that this is how it should be. This is why trust is so important. It should be table stakes that anybody carrying a quota who is, you know, working on active company deals because they're company deals, right? Anyone trusted mm -hmm. with, you know, what the cost of acqui uh, the, the cost of acquisition is these days to, to be the, the, the figurehead of the company on an opportunity, right. therefore should be trusted that they are more than capable of doing the job. They are a capable salesperson. They're a capable representative of the company. So that should be the basis. That should be the level of trust. So the, that should eradicate the salesperson feeling the need mm -hmm. to show they're doing a good job because that should be table stakes. They should know what they're doing, right? So what then becomes, what should become the recognition of doing a good job is either A, positive progress, that is genuinely positive progress. And of course, mm -hmm. that's why Medic's so good because you can't really fool people with Medic. It's, it's very straightforward. It's, 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 yeah. you know. The second is, and this is really important, is spotting problems with the deals, gaps, right? Yeah. That is a the definition of a good salesperson, that they can see where they're weak with their deals, where there are weaknesses, where there are yeah. problems, where there are challenges, because only then can you solve them? And so going back to that that sort of trust thing, the salesperson should come in, going back to those big words, and feel that I can be vulnerable here because I'm not I'm not afraid that anyone's gonna mm -hmm. think that by me putting my hand up and saying, Hey, look, I've got this deal, I'm really glad we're all here together to talk about it today. I'm really looking for your advice. But let me just start out by saying I haven't got a champion here. I've tried. This is the yep. person I've been working with, but they're just, for whatever reason, I haven't been able to test them. I don't think they can be. Whatever it is, that is a salesperson doing an A1 job. Because if they don't make that the number one thing that everyone's there to talk about, and you you skirt over the fact you don't have a champion, you talk about how great the decision criteria is and how well you understand the process and what great metrics you found, nobody in that organization is going to care about those metrics but exactly this this is this is a big thing because many of the organizations out there today are looking to adopt Med medic for improving their results right uh, deal velocity average sales price what else have you and then they start by uh, implementing it right implementing mm -hmm. so that's education essentially uh, bringing people up to speed so that they can uh, speak the language mm -hmm. the common language that we mm -hmm. always talk about but if if then as a next thing, there's this new initiative and people are keen, but they also want to show that they're a good job. You want to make sure that as the comp uh, company adopting the uh, the framework, you make sure that this is uh, the, the, the way that you work, right? So that the gaps are celebrated, as you said. Yeah. And you want to tackle that straight away because otherwise there's such a high risk of this happening. Yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right. And, you know, that's so that that for me is like a, a, an initial major benefit. Um, of, of the deal review, getting getting those gaps out in the open so that they become the number one thing that everybody's focused on solving. And you know, the great thing, like you said, about all those different parties you have in the room from you know, other AEs, of yeah. course, which is which is really valuable because not only do they bring value to the table of their own experience, but they're actually vicariously learning about this person's deal, which will be something that will definitely happen to them in the future. So they're kind of learning through someone else's experience, which is brilliant. Of course, it's reminding everyone of, of Medic and, and, and everyone sharing their, their thoughts on that, which is great. But then you can bring in SDRs that may be on the, the promotion path. But let me tell you, some of the greatest deal reviews, some of the greatest revelations in deal reviews yeah. have come either because an SDR has um, added some perspective because they might have been researching that account for three hours before we got the meeting or the opportunity with them. And they'll go, oh, you've, if you've, if you thought about Sarah Smith, um, she, she, you know, she used to work at ABC, who was a customer of ours. And all of a sudden you've like, wow, I, no, we didn't know that. And it's yeah. because that SDR has that extra context or they just have a fresh perspective. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And it's, I also like that how, how practical you are getting here. So if we, if we are practical about deal reviews right now, um, the session starts, do you feel like the, the person who presents the deal is going to talk a long time about what they already know, or should we dive right into the, the gaps? Yeah. What are the, what are the yeah, thoughts there? I have a strong opinion on this, right? Deal reviews should be once a week, an hour long per team, per pod, per sort of six, seven, eight right. people, whatever it is, everybody related to that pod is invited. Marketing, SDRs, partnerships should be there. I would love to see senior leadership coming into those deals. They're, 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 they're the, for me, there's no better hour you can spend as a team, right? right. Get them involved. First things first, um, 
make it voluntary. Make it, don't rotor them. Don't make it so it's like it's, you know, alphabetical person A's first, person B's second sort of thing. So get that healthy competition where people will see the value and they're kind of almost friendly, but fighting over that spot. And then you can kind of, if, you know, if there's the nice problem that I've had in the past where I've had to add a second weekly session because right. there wasn't enough. That's a yeah. great problem to have, by the way. So that's the, that's the second thing. Get, get, um, get people to, to nominate their deal. So if the, the session's on a Wednesday, if you use a Slack or you know, other great messaging tools are available, mm -hmm. um, then automate on a Monday, say, you know, Wednesday session, who wants it? And then the role, it, the job then is that the person who, who takes the session has to write in Slack, or whatever messaging framework you're using, that's what you just asked that they mm -hmm. have to write a short bio that everybody who's coming to the session has to read. So you eradicate that first five, 10 minutes. They already know. They already yeah. know the way it's the, you know, the, 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 and then I did this and then I did that. And oh, yeah. you know, listen, listen to what a great job I've done here. Yeah, that's which great. I've done it, by the way. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not beating <laughs> up. I've, I've found myself, oh God, I need to stop talking about, yeah. you know, the, the but this is so common. I think this is, this is a great setup for uh, improving deal reviews in general. And, and some of the topics that we just spoke about are, are big, right? It, it is about culture, about trust, but that happens in the in the smallest things that you do in your organization. So if you can do it uh, anywhere, you can do it there too. Yeah. One last thing I'll say on the, the logistics. There's likely to be um, 10 actions that come out from the session. You know, you mm. need to go and introduce to this person. You need to tighten up on the decision criteria. You need to really understand what happens in the decision process after this step, whatever those things are. Or, you know, you need to understand who that competition is better or whatever it is. Those actions should be caught and kind of held accountable. So the way I used to do that was at the start of the next deal review, there was a period of time where we would review previous actions outstanding, not just from the deal review before, but we would look back at any outstanding um, actions just to keep people on their toes, just to yeah. keep them sort of those actions front of mind, because not just for the obvious reason, which is that makes people take the actions. There's a bigger picture thing going on here around accountability. If you think about it, if you're being invited to spend at least an hour of your time a week to join a deal review where it's not actually always going to be your deal, you know, it might be one in six of the time that's your deal, then you're being asked to give up an hour of your time to help someone else in your team. And you don't mind if your culture is right, because you know, if you help your, your, your teammate, mm -hmm. it means more success for you, more references from you, all that good stuff, more money in the bank, more R&D, you know, ping pong tables, whatever it is your company spending money on, right? All good. But... If you're coming to that session and you're giving up the hour of your time and what you're seeing is a lot of chat and not a lot of action, then that is the the, the de decay that will start to happen in those sessions. Because you were saying, you know, this is just, you know, this is just a session that everyone comes to and they say all the right things, but no one's actually ever held accountable to the actions. Particularly, the funny thing about this is it's the best salespeople that have the, that, that this impacts the most. Because if you think about it, if you're sat as, as good as an elite salesperson, mm -hmm. maybe one of the best in the team, let's say, and you're sitting joining somebody else's deal review, and there's some actions that have been asked to be taken about that deal review already, and let's be honest here, if you're a salesperson, you're already upset that someone else has got a deal that you don't have. You, you think you should have that deal, right? And that's just the way our industry works. But if you're sat there listening to this deal and there's all these actions, some of which you would, you're probably thinking, I would have done that already, right? Then if those actions aren't held to account, then the whole thing implodes because you start to feel like, what's the point in these sessions? No one's ever held to account anyway. So that all ties back into that cultural importance of building trust, building accountability and building like collaboration that everyone's kind of pointing in the same direction. Absolutely. That's great. It's very practical. I feel like there's <laughs> so much in yeah. this uh, short session. You have to pay for this show, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's yeah. like uh, something like Netflix, same kind <laughs> of amount of money per month. Yeah. Someone's got to pay for the yeah. uh, whiskey. Cheers, Pim. Cheers.